So you want to be a gamer. Okay, okay, I know how that sounds, but hear me out. Let me explain what I'm talking about first before you start roasting me in the comments. Hello, and welcome back to another video. My name is Joy, and today we are going to be talking about how to get into gaming. This video has a focus on role-playing games in particular, but should work for most genres. If you're familiar with my channel, you'll know just how hyped we are for Hogwarts Legacy. We've got our house colors on, our wands at the ready, and our Butterbeer getting us a little bit tipsy. Something I noticed right away after the initial trailer for Hogwarts Legacy had been released was the amount of people who were interested in the game but had never played a video game like this before. So I thought I would make a video sort of introducing you to the world of role-playing games on consoles and PC. So the purpose of today's video is sort of giving a practical, simple guide to help people get into gaming who are ready to do it, but maybe just not ready to dive right in. And it's a big investment of time and money, so I get you, but don't worry, I got you. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Story on how I got into gaming. Since I've been old enough to read, I've been playing video games. I started out on the Game Boy Color, and one of the first games I ever got was Pokemon Gold, and if you know, you know. I was probably seven when that came out, and handheld gaming was basically all I knew until I was about nine years old. One day, I was sat in front of the TV in my parents' family room, and on the screen came Kingdom Hearts. No idea about any of the characters, Square Enix, or Final Fantasy, or anything like that. But I knew I had to play this game, so I begged my parents for PlayStation 2, and we went on holiday, we came back, and I had promised that if I had a PlayStation, I would scream. I get home, and I open the door, and under the tree is a PlayStation 2 and Kingdom Hearts. I've been playing console games ever since, which later evolved into PC gaming as well. If you've made it this far and through that story, then you and I are gonna get along just fine. The first thing I wanna say in this guide is if there's a game that you see and that you're just really interested in and your brain lights up when you see it, I mean, just go for it. That's, that's the biggest piece of advice I have for you is just try it out and see if you like it. But for the sake of this video, let's go ahead and say maybe the game isn't out yet. <laughs> Hogwarts Legacy. <laughs> you wanna get your feet wet super hyped. Well, let me help you out. We're going to talk about similar games, and this can go one of two ways. I can either show you games that are Harry Potter-ish in nature that remind you of the Harry Potter series, or games that fit the category of Hogwarts Legacy. I'm going to be covering the second one because I want you to hop into this game feeling no frustration from lack of experience. I think the first thing that you should know is what genre Hogwarts Legacy is and what exactly the terms mean. Hogwarts Legacy is an open world, single player action and fantasy role playing game. So you can expect a huge map with hours of exploration in store, often numerous side quests aside from the main storyline, character leveling, and a story that is action and fantasy in genre. A role-playing game, or RPG, is exactly as the name implies. You take on a character, either created by yourself or chosen for you in the story, and you follow one or many narratives. Games like these often have quite a lot of replay value, which makes every time you start it up just as exciting as the last playthrough. Single player means, as it sounds, you cannot play cooperatively or do any fighting against anyone that isn't an NPC, non-player character. Though I wouldn't put it past Avalanche to add in a PvP or player versus player mode so you can battle your friends later on. All right, I wanna show you which games I think you might like trying. These all range in difficulty, but each will have a tutorial to show you the ropes when you get started. So let's begin. The Elder Scrolls Skyrim. In this series, you create your own character, follow a number of side stories, and eventually complete the overarching storyline where you are the Dragonborn, and your quest is to defeat a dragon called Alduin, the World Eater. This world is set in, quote, a pre-medieval period with Tolkien-style monsters, magic, and limited technology. Skyrim remains spoken about because of its seemingly countless quests, world building, and fun combat. Outside of Skyrim, this is the only Elder Scrolls game I've ever played, but I promise you, I played the crap out of Skyrim. Next up on the list, we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you will take on the role of a Viking raider on his quest for glory. You'll be able to explore the stunning and dynamic open world, which is truly one of the winning aspects of a game for me. I'm just going to mention that one of the cities in this game is based on Jorvik, which was the Viking name for the city of York, which I visit regularly here in England. Third on my list is Shadow of War. 
Taken from Wikipedia, Shadow of War continues the narrative of Shadow of Mordor following the main character who is still infused with the spirit of the Elf Lord. These two travel to Mount Doom where they forge a new ring of power, free of Sauron's corruption. In this game, you'll experience an incredible open world that makes use of the Nemesis system. The Nemesis system is, quote, a unique mechanic that essentially relies on a military-like hierarchy of NPCs that can remember player actions. While, in my opinion, it isn't necessary to play Shadow of Mordor first, it is recommended by fans of the series to do so, or to have at least read The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings books. I personally don't agree with that either, as I'd like to just take games head-on in series, but it's up to you to decide. Okay, maybe you've heard of this one, The Witcher. In this series, the player controls Geralt of Rivia, who, quote, struggles to find his place in a world where people often prove more wicked than monsters and beasts. He is a traveling monster slayer for hire, mutated and trained from an early age to slay deadly beasts. Regardless of where you stand in the world of gaming, The Witcher is almost promised to be something you'll have heard of due to its popular television series released in 2019. All right, next we've got Zelda Breath of the Wild. Taken from Wikipedia, the game is an installment of the Legend of Zelda series and is set at the end of its timeline. The player controls Link, who awakens from a hundred year slumber and attempts to regain his memories and prevent the destruction of Hyrule by Calamity Ganon. In the original Zelda game, players aren't given much in the way of instruction and are left to explore the open world freely. Because the world has little structure, it is designed to encourage exploration with the main storyline being completed in a non-linear fashion. This is a game for fans of puzzles. I personally have a tougher time with those portions, but I know loads of you big brains out there would knock it out of the park on your first go. I'm excited for this one. Final Fantasy XV. Taken from the Final Fantasy XV fandom site, the story of Final Fantasy XV follows Prince Noctis and his friends as he embarks on a journey to reclaim his kingdom that has been invaded. He discovers he is on a quest to combat the powers of darkness with the powers of light only the Lucient lineage of kings can wield. Final Fantasy games are a long-going series with characters make appearances in a number of other games outside of the series, and this is a personal favorite company of mine, Square Enix, so I can personally promise you a very good time playing most games in this franchise. All right, last we have Marvel Spider-Man. This was recommended by Dylan when I was sat down scratching my brain for ideas as he played this, and I really only watched, but I can attest to the funness of it as swinging from building to building was really cathartic to watch. Taken from Wikipedia, in the main story, the superhuman crime lord, Mr. Negative, orchestrates a plot to seize control of New York City's criminal underworld. When Mr. Negative threatens to release a deadly virus, Spider-Man must confront him and protect the city while dealing with the personal problems of his civilian persona, Peter Parker. The last piece of advice I have for you is you just gotta wanna do it. If you hand a kid a video game, they're gonna sit down and play the game because they're not really playing it to get to the end point. So even if it's frustrating, they don't really feel it because they're just enjoying it for what it is. I ask that if this is your first time playing a game like this, maybe take that sort of mentality as a kid and just play it for what it is. Don't feel that you can't do it. It's all learning and you could, you'll get there at the end. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions for me or for anyone else, go ahead and leave it in the comments down below or any suggestions for future videos and I will try to make that a reality for you. Thank you for sticking around and I will hopefully see you in the next video.